welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Ali, this is my sister Jess, and together we run Esme Studio, which is a flower studio in London. So this week Al made a flower arrangement in celebration of the film Painting the Modern Garden from Monet to Matisse, which we'll be showing in cinemas all over the UK from the 27th of February. We saw the original exhibition at the Royal Academy and this week we saw a preview of the film and it was lovely to be reminded of all of those beautiful paintings by different artists of their gardens. And especially curative in February. <laughs> yes. The greyest, wettest, I mean, particularly at the moment, right now, it's, it's so sort of... bleak. <laughs> yeah. It could be bleaker, have, really, or more bleaker. colourless. Yeah. So to see all that colour yeah. um, in the film was just very, Especially very Mo uplifting. Monet's garden with all those beautiful pops of red and just this, yeah, it was just, of colour, just yeah. really uplifting. So we wanted to make something that was um, inspired by that. So I was able to get my hands on some amazing corally red ornamental quince branches and I used those to reference that pop of red um, in Monet's garden at Giverny um, in the arrangement and combined it with the sort of so beautiful soft silvery greens of cardoon leaves mm. and then some kind of much more muted tones from the hellebores in um, sort of coffees and, and dusky pinks. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the process of making a flower arrangement because it's an artistic medium that uses a natural material to create the composition um, rather than, you know, uh, watercolours or oil paints. And that presents challenges sometimes, and it's not always a straightforward process. And I think editing really is very, very important in flower arrangement. And this arrangement in particular, um, which was for an image, and so, well, I guess you probably could talk a little bit about the Yeah, well, we worked together, we worked together on creating an image of the flower arrangement so it's very much a joint process in terms of the placement of the stems as it's being created but then at the end it's about standing back and you know reviewing the whole picture and especially with photography and thinking about depth and things like that in the flower arrangement it does need quite a bit of editing and with mm. this arrangement in particular what were the kind of different steps that you went through to edit it? So I started by taking out the rosemary and this was because in the finished composition the rosemary just looked much too dense and it's really interesting that sometimes in a photograph as opposed to in real life or you know when you have you're making a flower arrangement for an event for example it's it's they're two very different things they're two different projects and the rosemary was just far too I think because it's such a textural element. Spiky. Isn't yeah it? it's spiky yeah. and it's dense visually very dense and I think that's because it's dark and it's just something to do with that texture it's very busy and the reason I'd used it in the first place was because the rosemary is flowering at the moment and it's this beautiful um, the the flowers are a really beautiful pale blue color and I really wanted to mm -hmm. to bring that in to the arrangement and have that like very sort of pale icy blue um, I think just alongside the, that corally red mm. it really makes it mm. pop but it's it, it just it just work. didn't work and so I, I took all the rosemary out. The other thing was the quince so I don't use quince very often. The beauty of using a Kenzen is that you can change things. Um, a Kenzen is a pin holder by the way if, if you don't know it's um, uh, sort of a metal disc with spikes and you stick the stems onto it so it's great for things like branches because it holds yeah. them in place. It allows for really precise placement which is brilliant for woody stems and heavy stems what I did was I felt that the 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 main sort of structural branch was just slightly too wide um, and it was unbalancing the whole thing and so I actually took that out and replaced it at a slightly more vertical angle and I also um, cut off the very tip of that branch um, and that was in order to make it slightly shorter um, and bring the whole thing down a bit, but also to leave a much more elegant curving shape at the end of the branch. I also decided to add in some honeysuckle and I think it just felt like it really needed some something, sorry, um, a little bit more airy and a slightly lighter branch than the quince, which is very heavy and very dark. And so the honeysuckle has these amazing very elegantly curving and sort of wriggly, sort of mm. scribbly stems. Well, we were we were comparing it to sort of the marks of a um, an artist might use with a paintbrush or with a pen. So if you have something that's quite dense and thick, like the quince branch, is quite a strong 
line mm-hmm. um, in the composition, and then the honeysuckle is more like kind of your, you know, your light scribble pencil sketches around the yeah. edge. I do think that was really, it added a lot of movement, and you've got these lovely sort of, yeah, squiggly shapes. And, and for us, the wilder, the better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so for the final image, after Al have made those... Um, amendments to the arrangement um, I felt that the smaller arrangement that she made with the narcissi and um, the iris reticulata was just too cluttering in the frame so I moved that away um, but instead we, we still wanted that little pop of blue from the iris reticulata but they're just it was another way of trying to introduce <laughs> the blue we're constantly trying short to do short stems that. I mean it's not it's not the most flowery time of year so um Beggars can't be choosers at the moment, but um, we wanted to bring that blue into the image somehow, so we just gently laid the iris um, down in the corner of the image. And I, I think even that tiny little dash really helps. It brings out mm. the um, the kind of blue tones in the back of the cardoon leaves, which mm. are this beautiful blue-green. So um, we got them in there. We did. And also, I think because um, th- that arrangement was actually quite large mm. and the bowl was quite deep, and so the iris reticulata were just too short stemmed mm. to go into the bowl. But I did manage to get a little bit of scylla in there, didn't mm. I? Which I think, because it's got smaller flower heads, I was able to just like tuck it was um, over almost the like little the... bell. At the yeah, so if you look bell. carefully at the very front of the arrangement, you can see like this tiny little touch of blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We managed it eventually. We really hope it helps hearing a little bit about the, um, the process of making an arrangement and editing it. I think editing is just so important, as I said, and to follow your gut instinct um, when you're making a flower arrangement and to also step back constantly so that you're able to see um, the whole composition, preferably against quite a blank backdrop um, so that it's not too cluttered. And then you can see how the shape is coming together and what you might need to change. And I guess that's a bit like a a painter, you know. Mm. Standing back from a canvas. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. If you're new to flower arranging or you're interested in learning more from us, then we are running a series of workshops at our studio in London this year and all the details can be found on our website. All the flower varieties that I used in this video are um, listed below in the description box and there's also a link so that you can find um, the closest screening for um, painting the modern garden if you'd like to go and see it. Um, As we said, it's starting from, uh, I think it's Tuesday the 27th of February. February. Um, and it's in cinemas across the UK. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like regular updates from us. Thanks for watching. See you next week.